You are listening to Pastor Rocco Tissen. For more information about this teaching and others like this, or to share your testimonies and to make contributions, please visit www.hofarlington.org. You can also mail us, Household of Faith Arlington, 5001 New York Avenue, Arlington, Texas, 76018. Thank you and God bless you as you listen. Holy Spirit, just take absolute control so that the Father will be glorified, so that Jesus will be exalted. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 47. Genesis 47 from verses 1 to 7. The Bible says, Then Joseph went and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their flocks and their halves, and all that they possessed have come from the land of Canaan. And indeed, they are in the land of of Goshen. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to his brothers, what is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, we have come to dwell in the land because your servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now, therefore, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt, or the land of America, the state of Texas is before you. Amen. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Amen. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent men among them. Tell your neighbor I'm competent. I'm then make them chief horsemen over my livestock. Verse 7, then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Isn't that interesting? Jacob blessing Pharaoh. We are in our, a week of career and business, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. We have seen an example of how God can bless a person, an individual, and that was Jacob. God blessed him where he was because, as because of a covenant upon his life, but the time came when he needed to relocate, and he did relocate. And he said that he relocated because there was famine where he was. And I know that half of us will relocate if I'm correct. And I don't know how and why you relocated. Probably there was famine where you came from. <laughs> but either we tell your neighbor I'm here anyhow. <laughs> Please tell another person I'm here anyway. <laughs> but I want you to know that you won't be here without God having a plan and purpose for your life. We all have different reasons why we came. We all have every, any excuse, whatever has happened that has brought us here, God has a hand in it. <laughs> that you are here, God has a hand in it. And you can get the best of any nation that you go, including America. You can get the best of any nation, including America. I've realized that Success formula is the same. If you apply it anywhere, it will work. How many of us know when you were doing mathematics, or let me say arithmetic, Pythagoras theorem and uh, almighty formula? <laughs> All you need to do is to plug it in. You get the same answer. When my daughter was going to, was, wanted to be, said he wanted to be a math teacher, so we put, uh, they will put a, uh, poster on the wall with all the formulas. So whenever she wakes up, she sees formula. So she ended up knowing mass. For us, we wanted to know mass, but we put Bruce Lee on our wall and all kind of things. <laughs> all kind of uh, things that we put on our wall. When you wake up, the mass will run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So. For, I mean, if you want to be successful anywhere you are, because God is here with you, God is there with you, you can always make it in America. God is ready to make a way for you here. Amen. And we can see that 
for Jacob, he moved to another country called Egypt. And he moved with so many things, plentiful things. And he said one thing that I want you to hold on to. When Pharaoh asked him, why are you here? He said, we have come to dwell in this land. He didn't say we have come to make money. He did not say, we have come to do it and run. He says, we have come to dwell in this land. If you have your dictionary, go and look at what it means to dwell. It means we are here to be part of this place. We are here to stay for a while. We are here because this is where God has positioned us at this time. That's why we are here. We are not here just to waste our time. I'll tell you, I've been in America now. I mean, not totally I've been in America for the same number of years I've lived in Africa. So, man, I'm an American man, okay? <laughs> Just to let you know that I'm an any. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, but, but what I'm trying to say to you is that when you have come to dwell, you look at, when I look at about 30 years ago, if I had begun to invest in my home country, do you know that I would be a failure now? I will have been a failure. But you can imagine if I invested in this country 30 years ago, even pre-COVID, what we bought pre-COVID, look at what it is now. I know somebody is regretting now, but we told you. <laughs> you start by dwelling in America. Please live here. Don't be one leg in. One leg out. Some of us, we are here physically, but our heart is not here. We are here in body, but not in spirit. Please dwell in this place. There are so much good things happening around here. Because you don't see it is because you don't look for it. And whatever you don't look for, you never find. There is so much happening here. Is somebody still listening? Psalm 37, verse 3. Psalm 37, verse 3 says this. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And do good. What do you do then? Dwell in the land. And feed on his faithfulness. The faithfulness of God is here. You just have to feed on it. And you don't feed on it without dwelling in the land. Hallelujah. I want you to know that you have to do something to get something. Please, it does not matter who you are or where you are coming from, you must get a job. You must get a job. And that's because you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. It does not matter your qualification or what you have moved with, but when you get to this country, walk, do something. It's very amazing that there are so many jobs that are available, but we cannot do it because we are bigger than them. And I can give you example and example and example. Please, Pastor Layo, just come. Please tell them your degrees. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, uh, I have a degree in nursing. I <laughs> I have an MBA. I am a CRRN. I'm now the next thing I want you to tell them is when you got here, where what did you do? Wow. <laughs> I did customer service. <laughs> Eleven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's just to let you know. And I remember I asked her, I said, how are you doing? He said, my pastor, when you remove a tree from somewhere and replant it, does the, does the tree grow like that? 
you said. It says so the, the leaves have to come off. Wither completely, then the tree will have to take roots downward before anything can happen. <laughs> Pastor Duny, come. This woman is very brilliant. Don't mind, don't mind her being first class science student. <laughs> I mean, and that's the reality. When you came, what was your degree, and when you came, what did you do? When I came, I have a degree in chemistry and mathematics, but I started. <laughs> <laughs> yes, first class. I started working as a pharmacy tech. So, uh, who are you now? Well, I'm still working in the same in the same organization as. Oh, I mean. I'm in the management, I'm a nurse manager. Thank you, ma'am. I just want you to know that everybody started somewhere. I'm addressing this EU because a lot of us, we are busy taking one IT training, another IT training, another IT training, and we're not getting any job because we are listening to people telling us about six figures. You have to crawl before you start to walk. You don't even understand the language. You want six-figure job. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? We are telling lies on resume. We are people that are helping us to do interview. What children of God should not do? And we are asking for God to bless us in why, why we are telling lies. Lady, please come. I didn't prepare all these people. Just tell us where you started and who you are now. Um, I actually started as a substitute teacher, uh, and now I'm a principal at a school. She's a principal. She, she came in. You didn't tell us. She came in as a Hannah student. <laughs> yes, I started as an in international student, and I think I did everything to make money. I was thinking about it. About last week, I remember when I used to do meat pie to, you know, just to get by. Um, but some things that I used to do then, I no longer do because, of course, God has enlarged my coast. <laughs> and you know what it means to become a principal of a school? That's not a joke. I've asked people here, Can, can't you go and teach? I, I will beat the children. <laughs> <laughs> And that takes me to the next thing. When you relocate, you must change. You must change. The way you beat children there, you don't beat children. Yeah. And I want you to know, why do you want this change that you are supposed to make to become an obstacle to you? Because you cannot change. I can tell you sincerely today that some of us, if we, if we stop eating the food we are eating, we'll be rich. I want you to think about it. Just by changing your diet, not eating what you eat. Because when you take your money to go to an African store, do you know how much you spend? <laughs> We're just having fun this morning, and I want you to get something out of it. I remember one of her, one of her sisters, you know, there was a, a, a brother who needed food, and the church said, go and shop for him. So the sister went to shop for him. And when he got there, I was taking stockfish. That was, eh, when you have your money, you buy stockfish. <laughs> and I tell you sincerely, there are some habits that if you change them today, you will be wealthy within five years. And I want to get you thinking about those things that you just need to change. There are some people, all you need to do now is stop buying uniform and keep in an investment account. And within 10 years, you'll be a millionaire. I want to challenge you this morning. Think about how much have been paid to you since you have been in this country. Just take your time and think about it. How much money 
have been given to you since you have been in this country. And think about how much do you have in your account now? Tell your neighbor I've been suspecting you are your own problem. <laughs> you will realize that millions have passed through you, but you have kept nothing out of it. I've always known it's not about how much money you make, it's how much money you spend. How are you spending your money? I want you to know that if you think you are going to get better when you have money, that's why you will not get better. Money does not change you. Money will get the worst out of you. Money will make people to see the worst of you. Success will make people to see the worst of you. If you are not pleasant, you become so unpleasant when you have money. If you are disrespectful, you will start to insult people when money comes. Money don't change you. You have to change before you even make money. Otherwise, that's why money destroys a lot of people. Please do something and earn income, because that's where your prosperity begins. You must do something and earn income. That's where money begins. Stop complaining about employer that is not paying you more. Look inward and start spending less. I don't know whether that arithmetic matters to you. You are looking for more, but why don't you spend less? Because you will always look for more. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Ecclesiastes 9, 10 says, Work hard at whatever you do, at whatever you do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave. Whatever your hands find to do, do it. Please, there is no dirty job because there is no dirty money. Have you ever seen money and you say it's dirty, I don't want it? And I want to say this to you. Part of the change we need to make is that when you have gone anywhere to work, please do your work. Stop becoming nosy. Stop getting involved in what is, what is none of your business. I want to challenge somebody now. If you are looking for a cleaner, and I've, I've looked at myself before. As I said, if I want somebody to be cleaning my house regularly, can I get somebody in the church to do it? I said, no, because before you know it, they will take the camera and show every, look at how many shoes pastor have. Look at how many dress up. And that's what they would do. Because you are, people are not professional. And, and I want you to look inward. Can you do the same? Because everything about you will be out there. Because people are never professional. And that's why you see that when we want to transfer business, we go far away. Because you can't trust your own people. And listening to these Christians, there is no discrimination in America. There is segregation. And they are different. Discrimination is different from segregation. The problem is that we cannot remain among ourselves. Go to any Chinese restaurant, who do you see there? <laughs> you see that before you know it, every IT, when you get there, you meet who people, which people do you meet there? Indians. Don't think that all the old, oh, these are white Americans. No. Among white Americans, there are Italian Americans. They are German Americans. They are all of them, they are there. And they have particular thing they do. Do you know God gave us all these things God gave us for medica? When people get there, they are beating the elderly. 
God gave to us that anywhere you go, you will find Africans. They are the one taking care of the elderly. But are we taking care of them very well? When we are supposed to change their diaper, we triple the diaper so that we don't have to change it. I heard what I'm hearing rumor. And they are reporting to me, this is what your people are doing at work. They are knocking the head of elders and you are going to grow old one day. We go there to make money instead of to go there to do our job. It's all about the money. We have lost compassion. The spirit of God is not in us because it's all about money. How do we pray and prosper when we are not operating as a child of God? We have to change. We have to change. There are money you make, you put it in your hand, and they come blessed because of how you got it. It's not just about making money, it's building wealth. I remember a police who used to collect bribe in, an, in, a, in a country in Africa. <laughs> You're always too suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> No matter how the children need money, he will never give the money to them. He say, I don't give bribe children, money to my children. I only give them my salary. Please be careful that you are not using the wrong money to, to raise your children. The money that you didn't work for, the money that came with pain to others, don't use it to raise your children because it will never bring gain to the family. Please tell your neighbor, do something with your life. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, 2 Thessalonians 3, 10, the Apostle Paul was saying this. He says, while we were with you, we used to tell you whoever refuses to walk is not allowed to eat. If you can't walk, you cannot. Please, forget about it because I don't have paper, I don't have this. If you have it, you will not do more than you are doing. Researchers, told, listen, the researchers said that people who don't have paper to work, they make more money than people who have paper to work. Don't people have paper and they, are going, they give it to somebody to go and work with it because they are lazy. You may not have paper, you have your hand. Thank God you are not crippled. You can get your hands dirty. There are a lot of things you can do in this country that nobody will ask you for your paper. Oh, I wish I had paper. If you have it, you only travel to where they will be waiting for you. <laughs> That's what you would do. What we do with the paper is to travel. We don't do anything. Whatever you don't do when you don't have paper, you will not do it when you have paper. You say it's not true. Wait until then. Because people who are born in this country, they are sleeping under the bridge. Don't be idle, Christians. Don't be idle. You may have a job and still be idle. Because it depends on what you are doing with your extra time. Keep yourself busy. Otherwise, the devil will find work for you. And you may, not know, you may not be fighting and thinking, I have to roll, I'm not fighting. The devil is not finding work for me. What you do when you are not doing anything, is it godly or is it, the, or is it of the devil? Are you wasting your money or you are making money when you are idle? It's amazing, Christians, how we make $20 per hour. And when we want to take $200 decision, it takes us one minute. How will you ever make it that way? You make $20 in an hour. You spend $200 in one minute over the phone. It's a devourer. 
You don't even have to think about it to know that, ah, before I will get $200, how long does it take me? 10 hours, and you spend that $200 in one minute just by saying yes or no. And you are saying it's not easy here. Please, if you don't like it here, go to space. <laughs> because this is the best economy in the world. If you don't like America, this America is not easy. Go back to where you are coming from. If that's where you want to be. Somebody who came to me one day, I said, ah, this America is not easy, Pastor. I said, go back to your country. He said, they will kill me if I go there. <laughs> I said, who will kill you? He said, my siblings are waiting. They will say, you, you, you escaped, you came back. <laughs> we will kill you here. Because we were thinking it would be better for us because you left here. There are so many people who are praying to be like you. Yes. Why are you stranded? Yes. So many people are desiring to be where you are today and you are complaining. The family is counting on you. Generation is waiting for you to manifest. And look at how you are wasting away. Wasting your time, wasting your resources, wasting your money, wasting your life. When God has brought you here for a purpose. Don't be idle. There's no time for idleness. Do something with your life. I know you have a full-time job. Get something else to be doing on the side. You can't afford to be sleeping eight hours. You can't. Take one hour off it. One hour times five. That's five hours. Look at what you can do for five hours in a week. Think about something, one hour every day that you do, five hours, even leave weekend alone. You will be amazed what you can do in one year, five times 52. Imagine what you can do with that. But you know you can stay on social media and waste it away. Do you know you can be on the phone talking to somebody who is only asking you for money? Stop associating with people who, who ask from you and don't add to you. Everybody around your life, they are asking something from you. Who can you ask from? Every moment they are taking from you, what are, who are you taking from? I want you to take your time to think about it. We are a blessed generation. Start looking for more money when you have to look inward. Tell your neighbor, don't be idle. In Proverbs 13, verse 23, Proverbs 13, 23, the word of God says, on, on youth fields could yield plenty of food, like unused time can bring a lot of income. The time you are not using, if you will use it, it can bring a lot for you. Unused fields could yield plenty of food for the poor, but unjust people keep themselves from being farmed. You are operating at minimum when you can maximize yourself. People ask me, how do you have time to think about business, to think about the church? I said, I don't have any other life than my, the church, my family, and then my extra time, I think about business because that's my default. That's, I don't have time to do other things. But so many of us, we have time for so many things that are unproductive. I want to say to you Christians, you will need people no matter what. I know some of us will say we don't get along with people. How do you get along in life if you don't get along with people? No matter the skill you acquire, you will need people. 
to manifest this skill. I say this to you. Africans are the worst marketers. They don't even know how to sell. That's why a lot of people will tell you, hey, I cannot, if I sell things, I can't collect the money. You will stay poor. Because sales and marketing is still the highest paid profession. There is nothing you have, you have to market it. There is nothing you have, you have to sell it. If there is a skill you must get, it's a skill of how to sell. How to market, you must be able to sell something. You must be able to market something. Because no matter what you have, people have to know about it. People have to know about what you have. Otherwise, you can have it and it will perish with you. You must go and get that skill of how to sell. Even you yourself, you are selling yourself. A brother was busy trying to search for a life partner some times ago. And she, he told me that every, where every girl he has gone to meet, they were saying no, no, and no, and no. I said, tell me what you normally tell them. Say, well, that I tell them that I came as an Tarahina student, and because I cannot pay the data, now I'm out of school. So I said, will you marry yourself with the way you have? <laughs> I said, so pastor, what should I do? I said, paint the picture of the future. I came here to go to school. I wanted to become this and become that and become, and, and I mean, I see it happening. You know, this is the way I want to do it. This is where I want to do it. It's only that I just have a, you know, some, some uh, little something now. <laughs> <laughs> I just have something that I'm praying about, you know, and very soon I'm going to get over it and... <laughs> he said, that makes sense. <laughs> now, now the guy is doing very well, extremely well, extremely well, extremely well. If you can't sell yourself, it's a problem. That's why a lot of people are not married. They tell you who are you. He says, what do you mean? We say, who are you? He say, what do I mean? <laughs> if you can't sell, go and learn it. Go and learn it. It's a skill we must all have. It's a skill we must all have. Because you will have to deal with people. And if you have to deal with people, you have to get people to be on your side. You have to get people to agree with you. And there is a popular saying that people will first of all buy you before they buy what you have to sell. Your appearance matters. Your appearance matters. And some of the first, the way we appear, we appear for interview, they look at you, you are not hireable. Please dress for where you are going. Be at your best. Your appearance gives the first impression of who you are and what to expect about you. May you appear beautiful. Amen. I say, may you appear beautiful. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will appear beautiful. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Proverbs 27, verse 17, Proverbs 27, 17, you need people. And the word of God says there, people learn from one another. People learn from one another. Just as iron sharpens iron. Whatever you need to learn, something already has, somebody has it. And you can learn it from them. You can learn it from them. You will never have everything. 
but there will always be somebody who knows about what you need to know. If you will sit with them, they will teach you. And that tells you you don't undermine every, anyone. You don't look down on anyone. Proud is a, pride is a destroyer. When you look at some people and you think, what does this one have to offer me? You are just, <laughs> you are just undoing yourself. There is somebody sitting close to you who can offer you something. Someone sitting close to you who can make you to become somebody. They are very close to you. What you need is never far away. You are the one who is far away from what you need. Please talk to someone all the time. Communicate and network. You know, in the corporate world, they will tell you they are networking. And I tell you, they don't have as many people as we have. <laughs> well, they are networking. And here we are, we don't even network. Have you ever called, talked to somebody and said, what do you do? Where do you do it? How did you do it? If you, can, if, you do, if you talk to somebody every service, I can tell you by the end of the year, your life will never remain the same. Every Sunday, you make up your mind, I'm going to talk to somebody. Find out who they are, what do they do, where do they, and you will be shocked that your help is around you. There are sometimes we don't care. We are in a hurry to rush to nowhere. I want to say this, that you need strategies. Strategies are, <laughs> in strategies are included plans. You know, you plan for tomorrow, you plan for next week, but when you talk about strategy, it's a long-term planning. Don't expect to get rich tomorrow. If you have money in your account tomorrow, please don't come and share the testimony here. If you suddenly see $1 million in your account tomorrow, please report to the police. <laughs> don't come and share the testimony here. We need long-term planning. And I want you to hold on to this, and I hope one or two people will listen to this. You don't need more than 10 years to become a millionaire. Even if you are grand zero now, you don't need more than 10 years to have $1 million in your account. Even if you have nothing, you don't even have a job now. Only 10 years, you can become a millionaire. It's not as if I'm, guess, I'm trying to make you feel good. It's the reality. How many of us here know that we are still going to see another 10 years? Okay, so you can see how many millionaires we have their hands up here. It's the reality that it's only in 10, in 10 years you can do it. And you are going to live long. Yeah. And God is going to give you good health. Yeah. But don't say, I wish I had started yesterday. You can start tomorrow. Even now or tomorrow. There's no reason to regret what is in the past. Let's prepare for what is ahead in the future. Don't forget, if you are still alive, you are young. I say, if you are still alive, you are young. In Proverbs 13, verse 22, Proverbs 13, 22, the Bible says, good people will have where to live to their grandchildren. It's only good people who does that. But the wealth of the sinners will go to the righteous. I want to begin to round up with this. You need discipline to make your plans work. You need discipline to make your plans work. You need discipline. And when it comes to discipline, you have to understand what you can handle before you won't set out to, hand, to, 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 to begin to work in it. And I'll tell you an example that can be interesting to you. I told one of my daughter that I must cut my hair within 10 days. He said, that's a lot of discipline. I can handle that. Because I know your, 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 your appearance, your presentation is important. Even though now you see men, you know now you can't even recognize those people who are actually men and those who are normal. I mean, truly, if in those days you see people who have mental problems, you will know. 
Am I right? Because by the time you look at... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and how do you used to know them? But let's be so honest. How? They are here. When you see the idea, ah. <laughs> but now you don't know. Because both the normal and the abnormal, they wear the same hair. And he said to me, that's a lot of discipline. I said, that's true. But let me tell you what I cannot do. Because I want you to recognize you can't do everything. You can't be disciplined in what you cannot do. You have to know your capacity. You have to know your strength. At a time, I wanted to, I told them I wanted to whiten my teeth. And they say, okay, I have to first of all wear breezes. I said, that's not a problem, I wear breezes. That's why after the breezes, then I can now whiten my teeth. I said, that sounds good. So I put on breezes. <laughs> first of all, I came here this Sunday, I couldn't even talk very well. So I told them, remove this thing. They said, no, uh, that the pain will go. I said, this one. <laughs> After a while, I began to remove it myself. So when I, they saw the thing sticking out, they got there, they said, okay, we'll remove it. They said, okay, we'll give you this align so that uh, that one you put it on and you. And I, anytime I want to put it on, the thing will pain me. I, I will remove it. Every time I want to eat. And I just said, look, I have to give up. <laughs> If this teeth will not be white, let it stay the way. <laughs> I didn't have discipline for that. You have to be able to know. Don't even set out on any journey. You know you can't handle. Don't start anything you cannot complete. Otherwise, you waste money, you waste resources, and you also waste your time. I won't deceive you, that thing that I did, I had to still pay the bill. I didn't like it after I go here and there, I paid. And that's the way life is. We waste so much money trying to do what we are not able to do. Don't run another person's race. Don't try to be like somebody else. Know what you can do. Please don't run after big dreams when you have not fulfilled small dreams. Because sometimes we want to do something big. But start small. Start small. Because I do say this all the time, big head, big headache. There is no, nothing big that does not have big problem associated with it. You have 50 members to deal with, you have 50 problems. You have 1,000 people to deal with, you have 1,000 problems. So please don't envy somebody, any other person. Just dream your own dream. Have your own personal desire. Don't let anyone look down on whatever you are doing. You are the only one who knows where you are going. And you are the only one who knows the plan God has for you. I say this over and over again, define your own success. Don't define your success by any other person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Money does not make any individual. You are the one who makes yourself whoever you want to be. You need discipline before you can do anything that you set out to do. First Corinthians 9.27 Apostle Paul says this, he said, but I discipline my body. I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. You have to discipline yourself, bring it into subjection so that you'll be able to achieve whatever you set out to achieve. And I want to say this to you lastly, you must search out what God wants you to do. Take your time, it might look like, oh, 
And even why by what somebody else is doing, that may not be what you can do. We do not have the same grace. Ask God. And please, I know this sometimes look like, oh, I don't, please take your time. Even if it's one month, you are still asking God, what should I do? What should I do? What can I do? And anything that any, any idea anybody brings to you, ask God, is this one for me? Is this what I should do? Don't just start to run without m making sure that this is what you can do. Because enough of working and there is no reward. Laboring without anything to show for it. Before we pick race again, let's be sure this is a race we want to run. Very, very important. Don't do anything because somebody else is doing it. By God's grace, in our mantle this year, we are going to be teaching men real estate investment. That's all we are going to talk about in mantle this year. Let's rise. Listen, whatever we are telling you here is not what we read. Thank God we do read, but we are practitioners. We are practitioners. We are practitioners. Before the COVID started, I shared a testimony here how I bought a property, which was meant to be about $540,000 ordinary land. And when I bought it, I didn't have the money. I said I'll be paying every month, and they accepted. And I was paying, I still pay up to today. But before the year closed out last year, somebody came and said, can you send me part of it? I bought 27 acres. The person was pricing seven acres for 600,000. So I will have 20 acres free. Isn't that a good deal? Even if you say it's not a good deal, it's all right. <laughs> so what I tell you from this pulpit is not hearsay. If you stay too far from here, I'll probably tell you by the time you get back, all of us will have become millionaires. This is your year. Amen. I said this is your year. I said, this is your year. Amen. God did not bring you here to beg. He has brought you here to be a blessing. He has brought you here to be a blessing. And I pray for somebody that you will never envy anyone. Amen. <laughs> Nobody's success will ever threaten you. You know, somebody will ask, Pastor Rappo, you easily live with everybody, you forgive people. I say, I am blessed. What else can I ask from God more than that? What else? When you are blessed, it's easy to forgive. When you are broke, everybody, for, everybody offend you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor they are talking about you. <laughs> Someone who is not blessed, they don't overlook anything. They will hold grudges till nest, 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 as if you are the one who have caused their problem. May you be blessed. Amen. You'll be blessed in the morning. Amen. You'll be blessed in the noon. Amen. You'll be blessed at night. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your generation will be blessed. Amen. Whatever you lay your hand to do shall be blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Your project this year shall be blessed. Amen. In your place of work, you shall be blessed. Amen. In your business, the Lord will bless you. Amen. When you go out, I say God will bless you. Amen. Everything you have in your mind this year, the Lord will bless. Amen. At the end of this year, you no longer be small. Amen. The Lord will make you big. Amen. He will enlarge you. Amen. He will increase you. 
in the name of Jesus. You will have more than enough. I say more than enough. I say more than enough. In the name of Jesus. Wave to the Lord and just exalt him, worship him, and magnify him. And as we are thanking the Lord, I want to talk to one or two people. You are here. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. I don't want us to take you for granted because today may be your day. This may be the reason God has brought to you. And you are here. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. If you will just wave your hand, I will pray with you where you are. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. This is very important because <laughs> I can tell you what being a Christian has done for me, what being a giver has done in my life. You are here, you want to give your life or rededicate just to waste your hand. Please, there is a sister there. I want somebody to pray with her, just on my right side. Do we have any other person you want someone to pray with you, to join hands with you, if you are here right now? Any other person? You know, there, is, there was a testimony of, a, of one of my teachers in pastoral school that has, that has stared me so much. The old, the, old, the old man would say, I was a fool for Christ. Just doing everything for the Lord. I was a fool for Christ. Just doing everything for the Lord. And all of a sudden, they came to me one day. They said I was a millionaire. I said, how did it happen? They said, because everything you bought, their prices have increased. Who determines what increase? It's God. And I began to key into that. I began to key into that. That I will be a fool for Christ. But whatever I put my money in, it must increase must increase. And I can share testimony with you. So many, 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 many testimonies. So many, many, many testimonies. So many, 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 many. Let's be a fool for Christ. A fool for Christ is always wise because God has all the wisdom. And it's whoever you work with that you will be like if you work with God, God will give you his wisdom. What other people don't see, you will see it. What other people don't know, you will know. When people are saying there should be a casting down, you are saying there will be a lifting up. I really do encourage you, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just taste and see. Do everything for God. Be faithful to God. I can tell you, be faithful to God. 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 I don't know a better way to tell you. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. Just wave your hands to the Lord. I don't want to say more so that you will not be envious. Just, just. We hope that you have been really blessed by today's word. For more information about this teaching or other teachings by Pastor Ropo Tussin, or to share your testimonies and to make contributions, please visit www.hofarlington.org. You can also reach Household of Faith at 5001 New York Avenue, Arlington, Texas, 76018. Thank you for your support and may God bless you.